Welcome to example 18 in our integration topic. We are integrating inverse trig functions. If you haven't seen example 17, go back and watch it because I introduce the standard integrals. Um, it's not too much explanation, but they're, the, they're there to work with, and I've put them on top of the screen here um, to help identify how we go forward. So you're going to be faced with integration problems which look like one or other of these forms here. You're either be going to be given a fraction where there's a, a third on the denominator with a difference of squared terms we need to get it into, or you're going to be given a fraction that's got a sum, no square root sign, just a sum of squared terms. If it's the difference of squared terms and the third, you're going to answer is going to be an inverse sign, and if it's the sum of squared terms, it's going to be inverse tan, so at least you're in the, direct, you're the correct direction. Moreover, once we work out this constant term A, we know we're going to put that into our final answer as well. In the case of inverse tan, we're going to introduce it twice in our solution. So let's have a look at um, what's going on here in example 18. So find the integral of 1 over 1 plus 9x squared with respect to x. So quite clearly, if we look at the two forms, uh, it's a sum of terms on the denominator, no square root sign. So straight away, I know my answer is going to have something to do with inverse tan of x. What I need to do is arrange my denominator so that it is a sum of squared terms. And crucially, the x squared term has to be a unitary term. It can't have, as in this case, 9x squared. I've got to rearrange it so that it's just a number squared term plus 1x squared. So the way I do that is by taking out a common factor of 9 in the denominator, which leaves me a 9 plus x squared with respect to x. That 9 at the beginning is a constant term, so I can actually take it out of the integration completely, and I can get a ninth of the integral of 1 over a 9 plus x squared. That's good because we've got the sum of two squared terms, and I can be very explicit by stating that a ninth is actually a third squared plus x squared with respect to x. So I've now got it in the shape of this fraction here, 1 over a squared plus x squared is this whole bit here, 1 over a squared plus x squared. In other words, what we're seeing here, that a is the value a third. Now remember that I'm going to be using effectively 1 over a, so you can even here um, remind yourself that 1 over a is going to be 3 over 1, or 3. So when we actually write down our answer, we're at the point of saying it's going to be a ninth here of, well, it's the inverse tan. In fact, it's 1 over a times the inverse tan of x over a. plus c. Uh, we know that a is a third, uh, so effectively you've kind of got that going on, and that's why I was saying 1 over a. We could actually um, simplify it by just knowing ahead of time that we're going to write a 3. So it's a 9 of uh, 3 times the inverse tan of 3x plus c, and if you multiply all that in, you end up with a third times the inverse tan of 3x plus c. We don't need to uh, say it's a ninth of c because c is just a constant term. And that is our answer. Okay, So it's a wee bit complicated simply in terms of having to rearrange the fraction into the required shape. We then can work out what the constant term a is and then make sure we put it correctly into the uh, the standard integral form. Okay, I'm going to do a few more examples just like that, so try and catch them as well, and that will help your understanding of it. I'm just going to be uh, that person, and not there's so many equal signs up here. I really just want to say um, uh, that I'm going to write the answer, or the question down beside the answer, because I like doing that. There we go. Now I can finish it.